Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to another episode of Russ Can't Fly. <laughs> Okay, so as you already know, I mean, I'm still grounded, but I thought what I would do is I would show you how I've been practicing my chair flying just to try to keep my skills as sharp as I can. Um, definitely not the same thing as like actually being up there, but you know, anything beats a blank doing the best I can during these circumstances. So, but before I go and show you how I chair fly, definitely want to send a shout out to all those Survivor Reddit peeps um, all the folks that like ask some very great questions. Um, and for a few of you who have actually subscribed to the channel, um, from our conversation, uh, I definitely appreciate you guys subscribing. So the survivor Reddit, um, thank you for showing a brother some love. Thank you for the awesome questions. It was definitely a good time. So I really thank you guys for supporting me and for supporting the channel. Okay. So let's go fly in the chair. Okay, so one of the things that I have to do in order to do my chair flying, I still want to make sure I focus on going through my checklist. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the checklist with me because I didn't know we were going to be in this whole COVID situation and I wouldn't have access to an airplane. And that's actually where the checklists are. They're in like the, uh, the, the door pocket of the airplane, if you will. Um, but... One of the things that I did manage to do before I stopped flying because of being grounded, I actually downloaded this fantastic program called Garmin Pilot. Now, of course, this is not a commercial or an endorsement for Garmin Pilot, but you just wanted to say that I'm using uh, the, the software on my phone and it's been actually fantastic. And just like a Garmin GPS for your car, this actually works when you're flying. So I haven't been able to use it like in the airplane yet, but in addition to all of the other things that it has available, one of the things that it has available is checklists um, for airplanes. All right, so here's my checklist. So uh, parking brake is set, uh, cabin doors and windows are locked, close and lock, flight controls are free and correct. And that would be something where I'm checking to make sure the ailerons are moving up and down. The rudder, as I'm using my feet to move the rudder pedals, the rudder's got free movement. Um, and my uh, uh, stabilizer in the back as I'm pulling the yoke. Uh, so flight controls are free and collect. Flight instruments are set. Uh, and then I will have to reach down. Fuel selector is on both. Um, mixture is fuel is, is full rich um, elevator trim and rudder trim set to take off um, then I throttle to 1700 I'm gonna check my magnetos um, I'm gonna check carburetor heat uh, suction gauge suction gauge looks like it's good uh, avionics power switch is on radio is set I don't have an autopilot air conditioner brakes all right so I'm ready to take off. Now, one of the things that I would do now is as I'm ready to actually start flying, I'm gonna make a radio call and say what I'm gonna be doing, what air, um, <laughs> what runway I'm taking, that kind of thing. So it would look like this. All right, so Wingsfield, Cessna, Quebec, Sierra, about to take off on runway 24, wing, uh, flying out to the north wing. I would look to make sure everybody's not, nobody's coming. Enough power to get on the runway. A little bit of rudder pedal to turn to the left. And now I'm on center line. Full power's coming in. I'm doing a little bit of right rudder to counterbalance the left turning tendencies. Air speed is alive. I'm looking at my suction gauge on my gauges, making sure I'm going straight down the runway. I get 55 knots, rotate, and I'm flying. And I'm still going full power. I'm looking at my altitude, and at 1300, I'm ready to make my first turn. Wingsfield, Quebec Sierra, 901 Quebec Sierra, turning crosswind to the north, Wingsfield. And I'm turning. 
And so that's basically kind of how like some of the chair flying goes. Now, I'm not exactly sure about all of those speeds that I need to have on landing, but eventually what will happen is I'll be entering the pattern and then landing the plane. So once I get in what they call downwind, I'm looking for the numbers for the runway. Once I'm a beam the numbers, so that means once I can see those numbers outside the window, now what I'm doing is I'm preparing the plane for landing. So my power is gonna come to 1500 RPMs. I'm gonna put in my first notch of flaps, which just means now you have the wings, they look like this, and then the flaps come down a little bit. That cre increases drag and, and, and slows the plane down. Also, it begins to, I begin to lose a little bit more altitude. So I'm still going downwind. Now, when I'm 45 degrees from the numbers on the runway to where I'm gonna land, I can now turn what they call base. Uh, wings feel uh, 901 Quebec Sierra, turning base for one way two four wings okay so i'm turning base um second notch of flaps now at this point i'm looking for i believe and see this is where the, the speeds kind of throw me off but i think at this point what i'm looking for is like between maybe like 70 to 75 knots um and then once i see that the runway i'm lined up then i can start turning final Wingsfield 901 Quebec Sierra turning final for runway 24 wings. Now at this point, once I turn final, put in my third notch of flaps, that means the flaps are all the way down. I'm really beginning to lose speed here and altitude. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the numbers of the runway um, and I'm basically flying the plane in a nose down attitude as though I'm going to crash into those numbers on the runway and i'm looking at my speed now i believe once i start getting close to the runway and i cross and i make the field as they say i basically make the runway then i think at that point i want to be at 60 knots i'm coming down and then just as the plane is coming down to the runway i do a transition where now the plane is not coming down but i'm pulling back on the yoke and at some point I should start hearing the star horn and I land. Once I land, I'm gently on the brakes and I'm looking for the exit. And then once I exit off the runway and I cross the stop short line, Wingsfield, Quebec, not, <laughs> Wingsfield, and I actually do this when I'm actually flying to, it's like I get tongue tied or something. Wingsfield, Quebec, <laughs> Cessna 901 Quebec Sierra cleared one way two four wings. At that point, I clean up the plane. I um, get rid of all of the flaps. Um, oh, you know what? And the things I forgot to do. At that point, so when I'm in, well, there's some a bunch of stuff I forgot to do, but you can see that's why I'm trying to practice this because now I forgot. Because when I was in the downwind leg, when I'm flying parallel to the runway, I'm supposed to, in this particular airplane that I fly in, I'm supposed to actually put in carb heat because now I'm flying slow. That prevents any ice from building up on the carburetor. And I have to make sure that the mixture's full rich and I should be making sure that the fuel selector's on both. So those are some of the things I forgot. So that's pretty much some of the ways in which I chair fly. And I'm gonna keep doing that to try to remind myself um, you know, how to do takeoffs and landings, just going through the sequence so that I don't have to start from scratch when I get back to the airfield. So I thank you for taking that quick chair flight for me. As you can see, I'm fumbling all around, but that's why I keep practicing because chair flying is just as important as real flying because one of the things it'll do is hopefully it'll help home, continue to help hone my skills so that when I do get back in the cockpit, which I can't wait to do, um, I, will, I won't I will be as rusty. I'm gonna be rusty because it's already been a month 
since I've been in the airplane. And so just the feel of it, but at least I will remember the sequencing of what I'm supposed to do in terms of running through my checklist and all of the things that I'm supposed to do when I'm in the cockpit. So I will be chair flying for as long as this thing happens, It'll probably be quite a while, but you know what? That's okay because I'll still be learning because as you saw in my chair flight there, and even though that was fairly abbreviated, you see, I forgot a couple of very key things when I was coming in to landing. All right. So again, I thank you for sticking with me. We'll probably do some other things, some chair flying. I'm actually hoping to maybe grab a few pilots and start interviewing people uh, because I've been meeting some very, very great people. I'm going to be introducing you to them pretty soon because I'm really beginning to be part of this aviation community. So I thank you for being with me. Russ can fly. I'm out. Be safe, y'all. Peace.